In the last video, we saw that inspiratory muscle training reduces blood pressure. And that was true regardless if the study was performed in young, middle-aged, or older adults, as shown by the green arrows. So with that in mind, the topic of today's video will be, was my blood pressure reduced as a result of using a lung training device? All right, so let's start off with systolic blood pressure before lung training. And this data is over a three-year period from September of 2019 through October of 2022, and that's 60 individual days of data for systolic blood pressure. And there we can see that my average was 123.1 millimeters of mercury, or 123 uh, for short. Now, note that I measured blood pressure five to six different times around the same time of day, so around noon, and then I took the average of those five to six measurements and recorded them in an Excel file. All right, so let's put these data into perspective. How does systolic blood pressure change during aging? And based on this plot, it should be pretty clear that systolic blood pressure increases during aging, both for men in green and women in blue. Now, what's expected based on chronological age for someone of my current chronological age would be a systolic blood pressure of 125. So I guess it's all right that my systolic blood pressure average over the past three years has been 123, which is a little bit below what's expected. But we can see that for someone that's around 18 years, so uh, youth, we can see that systolic blood pressures, at least for men, is somewhere around 118. But is that optimal? What's optimal for blood pressure? Well, in one study that was published in 2021, optimal blood pressure keeps our brains younger or is associated with having a more youthful brain age. So in this study, they saw that people who had systolic blood pressures less than 115 had significantly lower brain ages as determined by MRI scans of the brain. So that's the goal, to get it lower than 115 for systolic blood pressure. What about diastolic bl blood pressure? And that's what we can see here over that same three-year period before lung training, my average diastolic blood pressure was 74.6. So let's put that data into perspective by having a look at how diastolic blood pressure changes during aging. And in contrast with the systolic data, we can see that there's an inverted U for diastolic blood pressure changes during aging. So based on what's expected, based on chronological age, uh, somewhere around 77 for diastolic blood pressure is what I would expect for my 50 years of chronological age. Now, in terms of putting my data on this plot, technically it could be found in someone that's 30, average values for someone that's 35 to 40 years, but also 65 to 70 years. So the age re related plot for diastolic blood pressure isn't really helpful for determining what's optimal. So for that, to figure out what's optimal for di diastolic blood pressure, let's have a look at that uh, screenshot from the study that looked at optimal blood pressure and how it relates to brain age by MRI. And there they found that people who had diastolic blood pressures less than 75, or actually the combination of systolic and diastolic of less than 115 over 75, had significantly lower brain ages. So that's the goal, to keep it below 75. So technically, although I'm just a bit under it, I, sh I'm, I should be good in terms of slowing brain aging with having a relatively lower diastolic blood pressure. But I think I can do better. So now to the question of the day, did lung training in affect systolic and diastolic blood pressure? So starting with the data on the left, which is my three-year average, 123. On the right, we've got systolic blood pressure uh, first with the lung training device and then without the lung training device. So first, using the lung trainer device, which was the breather fit, we can see that my systolic blood, blood pressure was 120.3. And then when comparing these two groups of data with a two sample t-test, this was a significant reduction. In other words, when I used the breather fit, the lung training device, there was a significant reduction for, for blood pressure when compared with the earlier data on the left. Now, if the lung training device caused this reduction in blood pressure, if I remove the lung training device, I'd expect to see an increase in blood pressure. So is that true? Is that what I saw? So to test that, I, for the next seven weeks, I didn't use a lung training device post-breather fit. And over that time, my average systolic blood pressure was essentially the same, 120.5. So systolic blood pressure did not increase after stopping the lung training device, which then raises the question that if blood pressure was maintained without lung training, it suggests that something other than the lung trainer impacted blood pressure. So more on that in a second. Let's then take, take a look at diastolic blood pressure. So on the left, we've got pre-lung training, again with 74.6 average over that three-year span, and then with the lung trainer and without the lung trainer on the right. So when using the breather fit, my average diastolic blood pressure went down to 72.1, and when comparing that with the data on the left with a two sample t-test, this was also a significant reduction. 
So once again, there's a significantly reduced blood pressure, in this case diastolic, when using the lung training device. Again, if this is a real effect, if the breather fit caused a blood pressure reduction, when I remove it, I'd expect to see a blood pressure increase when I stopped using it. So I tested that. And post breather fit, we can see that diastolic blood pressure did not go up. In fact, it was 71.2, but that without showing the p-value, that's not significantly different from 72.1. So that diastolic blood pressure didn't go up when stopping the lung training device, again, suggests that something other than the lung trainer has uh, impacted my blood pressure. So which other factors could impact my blood pressure? Now, one that may be playing a role is body weight, as body weight is significantly correlated with blood pressure in my data. So here we take, we've got a look, we're taking a look at systolic blood pressure plotted against body weight, and this is from September of 2019 through February of 2023, and that's 120, uh, sorry, 102 days of data. And there we can see a significant positive correlation for systolic blood pressure with body weight. In other words, a higher body weight is significantly correlated with a higher systolic blood pressure and vice versa. So when my body weight has been lower, my systolic uh, blood pressure has been lower. All right, what about diastolic blood pressure? So here we can see similar data. As, di uh, as body weight increases, that's significantly correlated with a higher diastolic blood pressure and vice versa. As my body weight has been lower, that's been significantly correlated with a lower diastolic blood pressure. So with that, with the study in mind for the optimal blood pressure of less than 115 over 75, that suggests that if I can continue to move my body weight towards 148 and lower, that I should be able to get my systolic blood pressure consistently less than the, or an average systolic blood pressure consistently less than 115 over 75, which may slow brain aging. At least that's the goal. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, or microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, uh, that link and all the other links for the discount links and papers will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.